I'm Dorothy Njemanze. I am 37 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm an investigative journalist, a filmmaker, co-founder of the Dorothy Njemanze Foundation. And um, it, it's a survival-run organization that renders um, services to victims of sexual and gender-based violence. So we accompany victims to hospital, offset medical bills, accompany victims to engage with law enforcement, um, offset the bills because it's a very expensive process, especially with the police. Um, we accompany victims to courts um, where we need to be in court and offset the, you know, related bills to ensure the justice process goes through completely. We facilitate uh, mediation processes and alternative dispute resolution processes. In addition to it, we help to empower women and girls with things that they need to reintegrate into society after traumatic exposure to abuse. So I would think that lives that <laughs> I could have touched through my work would include the numerous people who were victims of the um, Abuja raids, you know, the random abductions and gross violations of um, women by state actors in Abuja at the time. And of course, those activities, investigating that, um, investigating those occurrences and instituting legal action led to a landmark court judgment, which is going to impact generations yet unborn. Um, that's, that's one strong one. A lot of the people who also benefit from the media content that we put out, sensitizing people on legal provisions and procedures, will be, you know, uh, beneficiaries. And what it does, what it does for them, and for us, is that it better strengthens people to engage better with systems that are supposed to help them assess justice. Um, we've responded firsthand, uh, real time, to so many cases of sexual and gender-based violence, and yeah. We're happy to do so. So by and large, it has helped to increase access to social justice for many people, access to social inclusivity and victim support. Social inclusivity because we are deliberate about ensuring that we carry, um, for instance, the deaf community along when we prepare, um, when we produce content, media content, there's always sign language. And we're happy to do that, everybody. It, it's in the spirit of leaving no one behind. What motivates me to do what I do is that I am um, a survivor of sexual and gender-based violence. So I know the pain of being a survivor firsthand. And I live my life now doing things that I believe would help people better navigate spaces that I had to navigate without the kind of support that I wish I had at the time. And so I know the mental health implications of sexual and gender-based violence and how it will be a lot less on the victims if they have appropriate support services. Additionally, many people who are victims of sexual and gender-based violence do not know the provisions, legal provisions and procedures to assess justice. So utilizing the entertainment media to create content for people to be better informed of their choices and make better informed decisions you know, in line to promoting a zero, uh, to, in line to promoting zero tolerance for abuse in their environment is something that I'm very passionate about. Mm -hmm. So, primarily, um, what we do is address a lot of um, harmful traditional practices and harmful gender norms that exist in society because they amount to abuse. And where people have been socialized into believing that what they're doing is proper or normal, there tends to be some resistance when you're trying to tell people that what you're doing is wrong and the consequences for the actions or inactions. Um, forced eviction you know, of spouses, which women suffer a lot, for instance. When we tell people that this is a crime known to law with defined penalties, we still get a lot of resistance of, oh no, it's my, it's my woman, I don't want her again. But it's a difficult process for them when we have to explain to them that you didn't just see a woman on the street and she got into your house that day. You did some planning. And so she needs to do some planning if she has to leave. You know, it's okay to disagree, but you disagree with a human face. You know, um, I have been targeted for assassination in what I do because there's a lot of exposing of a lot of um, crime I have. 
there is um, we've been attacked several times have been arrested several times by law enforcement um, during the COVID-19 period for instance um, I responded to a case of um, a domestic violence case in which the man threw his pregnant wife out and I was I was arrested and it was on the grounds that I was said to have um, kidnapped a pregnant woman and her children without taking permission from her husband. Remember that the man, you know, threw his wife uh, and the children out. And so, yeah, it's a dangerous thing. And the realities of human rights defenders needs to be taken into cognizance a lot better. Nonetheless, I will not no sleep if I do not respond. And so, respond, I will keep doing. I know I may be arrested the next moment I go out, but if that's the case, there are so many more people that are better aware now and they will stand up for me. You know, the sisterhood nest work is a lot stronger by the day, and so I, I'll just do what I need to do. The work I do helps me heal every day. As somebody who's gone through a lot of the things that I help people navigate with, um, it helps me heal the more every day. It's very fulfilling knowing that more people have the impetus to stand up to violence gives me a hope that Nigeria's future is a lot better. Um, knowing that more people are more, more people dare to take on situations that make females, women and girls uncomfortable or to build institutions that can better respond systemically to sexual and gender based violence as against um, believing it's a woman problem and women should solve women problems, that gives me hope for a better tomorrow. To me, this work means freedom, this work means liberation, this work means access to social justice, this work means access to social inclusivity, this work means better victim support. And we are happy that we've inspired a lot of other organizations and people to do right and to, you know, to take the right steps. We've been able to mobilize to pressure different, uh, you know, we've been able to mobilize to get different results that are favorable to women and girls. And so, yeah, this work to me means the future. This is, I mean, every street in Nigeria needs to have somebody putting as much impact as I, you know, putting as much pressure as I know I do on ensuring zero tolerance to sexual and gender-based violence. If that happens, it means that those in the police stations would have zero tolerance for sexual and gender-based violence. It means that those in the Houses of Assemblies, the National Assemblies, the different political offices, you know, would have the same mindset because everybody in the authoritative positions are a true reflection of the society. And so, yeah, this work means the future of Nigeria too. I will never stop what I'm doing till I die. The beauty of it for me is that um, I'm all about building systems and developing systems. And so long after I'm gone, I know that a lot of people are empowered to carry on doing things the right way, engaging with the systems the right way, pushing the agendas of women and girls the right way, mainstreaming the human rights of women and girls because women's rights are human rights, girls' rights are human rights. And that's the bottom line of, the bottom line of everything I do. My advice for every change maker that I have would be that um, you shouldn't give up. Be clear on what change you wish most to see and be the change that you wish most to see in all spheres. Irrespective of what table you come to or you're brought to, be principled. Principles go a long way. My biggest principles are hinged on human rights. And so if anything were to harm another person, you are very sure Dorothy and Jamaza will be the opposing voice in the room. And yeah, let's think about our shared humanity. Yeah.